coming right there. <laughs>I right, hate gents, when I first tried out this thing, I was like, everybody, I was a little skeptical. This is something that people play with, okay? I got that. I'm here to tell you, uh, the MCK Micro Conversion Kit by CAA, I have completely warmed up to this thing, and I'm going to win you guys over. I got a lot to cover here, a lot to cover here. So when you watch this video, if you, if you want to jump forward... Uh, I've got a list of timestamps underneath this thing down in the comment section. You'll be able to see time steps. So if you want to go straight to this, uh, straight to the braces, straight to the optics, straight to the different type pistols, all of it. Be looking for the timestamps below. It's gonna be awesome. So I love this thing, um, but I want to I want to win all of you over. Also, how do I do that? How do I do that? Is I'm you guys know I'm big. I'm bringing in subject matter experts. So I, I want to find somebody else who's who knows anything about this. So I hit up Emery. Emery, you guys know Emery, uh, Prime Combat Training. He's done lots of videos with us. Emery decided he's going to go straight to the top. He brought me in. Emery, who do you have here? <laughs> well, so we have here. Lieutenant Colonel, <laughs> yeah. it's it, now now it's a different dynamic, right? Oh, yeah. Lieutenant Colonel Mikey Hartman. Mike. Nice to meet you. Mikey Hartman. Yeah. Do I have to call you Colonel? No, you don't. Can I call you Lieutenant Colonel? You could. Can I call you Mike? You can if you really want to. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm good with that. <laughs> so, so Mikey ran the. Uh, he was in command of the sniping and sharpshooting school in the IDF, and that's where he and I have run into each other. He doesn't remember me because I was like this big. <laughs> but um, I was a little kid. Um, so so he, that school is right across, literally right across the street-ish from our counter-terrorist warfare school where we do our hostage rescue school and all that stuff. So we get to spend time there. I wasn't a sniper. I haven't gone through your school, um, but I've spent, I've spent a bunch of time there. So with um, Mikey's angels? I have no <laughs> idea what you speak of. <laughs> Neither does Mikey, no for idea. that matter. No idea. All right, so Mikey, tell us a little bit about what's going on here with these, uh, these new MCKs. Cool. Well, about four and a half years ago, I moved from Israel to America to see if we can uh, gain traction in the civilian market. And uh, it was a tough road. Initially, the conversion kits were not accepted, kind of like the way you yeah, were in the beginning. Yeah. And they, people felt that they were a crutch and go practice and shoot ammo at the range. And slowly but surely, it started becoming a cool thing. And about uh, two and a half years ago, we made our own conversion kit in America in, out of South Florida called the MCK, the, the Micro Conversion Kit. And that's 100% American made. 100%. You know, we've been able to give a lot of jobs in South Florida. You guys have been great. And our, our, our community out there, you guys have just knocked us out. It's been amazing. Cool. So pretty, pretty cool home run. So now we're just trying to have fun. Mikey, let me, yeah. let me ask you a couple of questions a second. So... I know a similar platform from before I taught some units back home uh, that use essentially the previous models. Mm -hmm. What's changed? What's new? Why is this awesome for us now in a new way? Cool. So in the past, when I, when I first got out of here a few years back, we had an older version, which was the Micaroni, which my job was to build the brand and sell those out there. And then, and those we were bringing from overseas. And then, again, about two and a half years ago, we decided to go, in, go our own way and to make the MCK 100% in America. So the micro conversion kit, basically what it is, it's kind of like a force multiplier. You take your handgun, it can be a Glock, it can be a Zig Zauer, it can be a Springfield, it can be a Smith & Wesson. And you can put this, hand, very simply, insert the handgun into our conversion kit. And be, be, because it has more points of contact, you're able to hit much farther. Your group size uh, gets a lot smaller and it just, uh, a fun, fun, fun range toy, but it's also great for law enforcement, home defense, and the recreational shooter. And guys, you understand that is big for me because, like I said, force multiplier. When you say words like that, people think, well, for the military, military this, military. No, guys, for you guys, the concerned citizens, a lot of you come take classes, you become capable citizens, you become proficient with those firearms. Now, how about all of the rest of your loved ones at home? Well, you're off wherever, who's at home protecting your home? 
who's protecting your family. Now, so we all have uh, spouses, and Marie's even got a girlfriend, believe it or not. Boyfriend, uh, boyfriend. We have family <laughs> members, but they don't have the same skill levels of training that we have. So we, we'll take my wife, for example. My wife has her Glock 19. My wife has her SIG MPX. She doesn't train with either one of them very well, uh, but if just, just looking at her Glock pistol, if that's all that she's got with her, uh, how well is she gonna perform if she's got two, three minutes warning, hey, there's an incident happening, there's something going on. Would she shoot okay? Maybe. Now throw in fight or flight. Now is okay good enough in a gunfight? Wouldn't it be awesome if in under 90 seconds you could tighten up that shot group and triple their maximum effective range instead of that loved one that goes to the range with you once a year only being good to 15 meters, if you could make them good to 45 meters, all right? Wouldn't that be awesome? For you to be able to give that to your family members just by uh, investing a little bit and just doing some basic dry fire with them. My, my family can't screw this up. They really can't, Mike. So um, you, you were talking about the uh, earlier about the, the three different kinds of shooters that are out there. Let, let, let's go over that a little bit. Sure. So what happened here, firstly, when we first came out with this, our basic goal was the home defense. Mm -hmm. We wanted the, the wife who's at home or husband's away, at, either at war or at business, and uh, to have an ability to, to protect the home. And even for the husband, you know, shooting with the MCK, as you said very well, you're at least increasing your range three times. I don't care how great of a shooter you are, mm -hmm. you are now a better shooter. So a novice gets better, a regular moderate guy gets better, and an expert gets better. So the home defense was, was critical for us. Then we went to the law enforcement. We have multiple law enforcements across America who have taken the MCK as their secondary because let's say they have their handgun in their holster, they throw this in their squad car, in their uh, motorcycle, and now instead of training and qualifying with another gun with 223 or long AR mm -hmm. or something like that, they use their same handgun. All they do, it takes about maybe eight to 10 seconds to put the handgun in and you're good to go. And now I'm able to increase range if the, if the um, scenario you know, needed that. And the other one is the, the recreational shooter. What's so amazing about America, people love their guns, we right? We love <laughs> our guns. We definitely love our guns. And, and we love you for that. So, uh, <laughs> so these guys that um, just love shooting, this has become like a thing. It's now cool to have one of these. And uh, fortunately for us, that's, uh, that's how it's been. So that, that, That's how it started with yeah. me. It started off with, let's just have fun with this thing. It was fun. This thing is so much fun to shoot. But when you start looking at... Uh, just something I can keep in the Jeep. Just leave it in the back of the Jeep and completely forget about it. Something I can leave in the Suburban, something I can keep in a book bag and not have to worry about taking that serial numbered firearm out of the vehicle all the time. Uh, it, it, the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, holy cow, there are a lot more <coughs> applications for this. Answer for everything? No. But there, guys, there's so much going on right here. Great stuff. All right. Um, Okay, so it's a force multiplier. Yeah. Also, you know, we actually went to Fort Bragg, to yep. your old home, okay. and we went to train a little bit with the Green Berets, and we did a three-gun shoot. Mm -hmm. And one of the stations, they were using the MCK, and they were driving by with a car and shooting out of the car with the MCK, and they kind of adopted it to be their truck gun. We didn't even know what a truck gun is in, in Israel. I've never even heard of a truck gun. <laughs> but here, it's like, this is a thing for a truck gun, you know? Yeah. We're building right now a little harness that you put on the passenger seat behind for the MCK, yeah. so you can just keep it there, you know, in, inside, your, inside your truck. Because they only have so many, uh, like my old unit, we had a few of the MP5 SDs, longer, about like this. A uh, couple of the kilos, but definitely not enough to go around, one per vehicle. Think the old uh, M3 grease guns back World War II for the tankers. Getting in and out of vehicles, small vehicles, armored vehicles, smaller package. Uh, it gets much smaller than an M4. So I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. All right, they all want to see how how do we do this? Uh, okay. Show me how to insert this thing. Cool, cool. So I'll take a, a CZ. Uh, a CZ is our latest model. New one, right? Yeah, yeah. We just came out with it last week. Okay. To be honest, we have one for the 07 and 09. The 10 series and another option of a Glock 2930 is coming out in about two weeks. Just make sure that we're clean you here. Come out with them every, every we, how often? About a, every month and a half, we come out with a new version. So we have the CZ now coming out with the Glock 2930, then the CZ10, then the Taurus. And then we're coming out with a, a, a Hellcat 
and a mm. um, 365. Nice. So uh, a lot of guys that like the concealed carry ones, we're trying to yep. make them for. Okay, okay, so basically what do you try to do here? You have a, a door here that you open up okay. and the door opens. <coughs> and then all you do is take the rear of the pistol, whatever it is, and the you line sight? Yeah, you line it up right okay. in the in what we call a little charging handle. You push forward and now you're good to go. So it takes about three seconds maybe to put it in and out. And if you now, were to practice it, yeah, you'd be under 10 seconds. Yeah, I, I think I think under five. And what's cool about this, the brace doesn't attach to the gun. It attaches to the polymer set, right? So I'm not attaching anything to the gun itself whatsoever. Yeah. And there are no tools needed, no Allen keys, no screwdrivers. I don't have to take something apart from the handgun. I don't have to dedicate my handgun to, to, uh, to this. So I can take my holstered gun, put it in here, and now I'm just increasing my range. So um, this is the way it looks. Yeah, yeah please. Let me check it out sure. here. All right, now that should be... That should have yep. been locked in, yep. pushed forward. All right, um, let that sink in, guys, because why do we care? Carl, you carry a pistol every day. Why do I carry a pistol every day? I carry a pistol every day because I don't plan on getting in a gunfight. If I plan on getting in a gunfight, I'm going to bring my rifle with me. I got my short barrel rifle. I keep it in my little book bag, and I bring it with me. Um, or I'm going to go even heavier than that. But we carry a pistol every day because we're not planning on getting in a gunfight. It is that... It's the same as that fire extinguisher hanging up on the wall. We pray we never have to use it, but better to have and not need. But if the situation changes, I mean, just being able to quickly, under 10 seconds, mm -hmm. or even if my wife trying to remember yeah. how to do it, literally talking yourself through it, it's under 90 seconds. And literally, that's with you trying to figure out. Um, but for us... Under 10 seconds, and guys, that is a pistol caliber carbine. I know we got to call it a uh, pistol because it's got a brace on the so back, a, not a, a stock. It's a pistol caliber pistol. But a uh, pistol caliber pistol. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, I understand. I'm not politically <laughs> correct, yeah. Mike. I'm just correct. Yep. All right. Um, Take it apart again. Okay. Take it apart. Let's say I'm I'm done. It, the situation didn't partake. You just reverse it. Push okay. the button. You push the button. Back. Take it to the door. Now we have two knobs here on the side. Right. We actually redid this on our Gen 2. You press this down. So I'm I'm releasing the lock the underneath lock the rail, the and okay. then you just pull it out. So it's pretty much simple, right? No, again, it takes what two three seconds to take it out. So it's a pretty simple. Uh, pretty simple system. We try to make this as ergonomic as possible. You know, when people look at this, they say, what's that grip? That doesn't look slick. That doesn't look sexy. You know, I'm going to let you talk about that grip, but yeah. I want to show them one more time. All right. Yeah. Literally, um, open the door, pull it out of the holster. Obviously we want it clear. All right. Sit it up in. To that I handle. sit my rear yep. sight, push it forward. Yep. Right, that, the front automatically clicks all, yep. all by itself. Mm -hmm. Close my door and it'll, lock. it'll click forward. Yep. Did it lock? Yeah. All right, then literally charge it. Safety works and everything. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm not simple. a CZ guy, but there are a <laughs> lot of CC guys out there. Um, the US military. Uh, a lot of them are running the the new Sig 360, uh, not three um, twenties, the M17, M18. You've got a kit for that yep, now. Yep, yep, the P320. Yep. Mm, badass. All right, super, super easy. All right, um, ergonomics, you talked about your grip. That, that grip, when I first look at it, uh, to me, I'm like, you know, that's wasting room in my book bag. It's wasting room in my book bag. But Mike, you would, because this is your brainchild, yep, yep. you would not have done it this way if you didn't have a thought process they want to know what it is okay so i hear you uh, we've been told this many times people said it kind of looks like a half a potato uh not looking slick sexy uh uh tactical and all that shit. but so what we tried doing was trying to make things more ergonomic so we're going to talk about it maybe later with our new pcc coming yeah. out but what we did here on the mck is we physically molded my hand with like play-doh kids play-doh right and we saw how the hand is built and the 
uh, roundness that the palm has. So instead of having to turn my hand and, and hold a vertical grip, the wrist it, we, just, it, we yeah. just keep it right there. So your hand is just like this. What we want to do is keep it natural. We want to keep it uh, um, the most uh, simple way that you don't have to think it through. You don't have to overthink this. So we just made it that your hand falls perfectly in. And you know what? This grip is probably the reason we have been so successful. Because once the guys put it into their hand, they want it. So you, it's like, oh, that feels cool. That feels different. I've never felt that kind of thing. It's a different kind of feel. And I think once people feel it, that's why we've been, uh, you know where we do really well at, at uh, retail shows, NRA shows, uh, shows that people can come and buy product off the Actually table. Actually put their hands yeah. on instead yeah. of just watching videos. Right, got so it. once they feel it, we got them. And it's a good feeling pie because it's under 300 bucks. So they're expecting to pay more and then they he hear the price, it's, it's, it's a no brainer. Now in the bottom of that grip, mm -hmm. all right, and this, this is, again, it, it's still clear. Yeah. Uh, this one is set up for a Glock. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got my Glock, uh, Glock, see this is my 19. son's Glock 19 in it. Threaded barrel, and I got my dead air can on it. Um, but besides the grip up front mm -hmm. here, uh, you can, besides having that long mag there, I can mm -hmm. actually keep a spare mm -hmm. mag right here. So literally, instead of you, do you really need to run around, defend yourself, your home with seven magazines on your plate carrier? You might, chances are not so much. But wouldn't it be always nice to have a spare mag? Uh, so literally, it dropped my mag, my regular magazine mm -hmm. release, mm -hmm. right? That's but then the to gun. drop the front one, I'm the, using yeah. that one. Yep. It's already I already have my beer can grip. I can stick it right back up in the gun. So um, and again with that grip, that is not even that magazine is not interfering with it at all. The kickstands on the side. I sure. don't know what the real name is. I'm we gonna call, call it a thumb kickstand. Rest. Thumb kickstand. rest. The kickstand thumb rest. Kickstand. No, um, you'll see guys, competition shooters, adding things onto the side of their gun. A lot of people like the extended uh, safeties on their 1911s because it gives them a place to actually apply grip to help manage that uh, perceived recoil. So that's where I'm used to seeing it. You see guys adding them a little bit just on the side of their pistols. You've got one that holds the whole thumb, which is very, very cool. Very, very yeah. cool. So we have, well, basically, I buy, I've seen guys, forget two extended magazines, I've seen guys with two drums. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not, there's some YouTube videos with, guys, I got two drums, yeah, it's, no, not, it's not I enough have, ammo 60, I they need, no they need 100, said, right? Uh, yeah. On a YouTube video, how did I know there was so, going to be uh, two drums? All, all weapons are clear here and all that, but yeah. real quick, um, the grip here itself, we have a place for the index finger, which allows me to pull back. Now, if you take your arm and you just keep it the way it is, it just falls in there. So where is your thumb? It's right there. So we just put a thumb rest right there, so we're able to uh, just rest our thumb. And it just gives you a much more secure hold when you're doing it. That's okay. all it does. And and these these come off, you can put them on in two seconds, right? Slide off just like you that. Can, you can have, so it comes with a rail yep. normally, right? You have like what, a five slot rail and then they just slip on. You can have it on one side, both sides. They come in packs of two, right? Yep. You can put on a little flashlight here. I don't like uh, flagging the camera, but yeah, you have a flashlight underneath. Uh, it's a 500 Lumis uh, Olight flashlight Olight. if you want to put it on there. Mm -hmm. So, and you, you got, you can put sights on here. The Picatinny rail is aluminum. All right now, yep. that is an aluminum rail. Yes. Now that's different from the Gen 1, isn't it? That is correct. All right, so on that, um, what other changes did you make on the, on the Gen 1? <laughs> Mike, okay. You want to go over those next? Sure, sure. Uh, real quick, our first gen, which we came out about two, yeah, right about two and a half years ago, okay. uh, was it came out with it, it was just a rubber stabilizer that when we closed and locked, you couldn't shoot with with it closed. A lot of the guys wanted to do something compact. I think you actually shot that way, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and they took it out of a bag and and shot without having to open up the uh, the stabilizer. So that's option number change number one. Change number two, we wanted to do. There's a lot of guys that have suppressor height sights. So so we built an MCK that has much more room on the top, allowing you to put suppressor height sights inside of uh, the MCK. And on top of that, but, yeah. Can we clarify that? Yeah. If you have suppressor height sights on your pistol already, mm -hmm. he's not talking about the backups, right? It'll still fit. There's more of a clearance on in the there inside for, yep. for taller sights. That's yep. very awesome. Okay. Uh, obviously, you can put a, a suppressor on as well. In our old version, you could not. So here, the whole nose and the shroud come out. You disconnect. This, this piece whole right piece here. right here comes out, okay. creating the hole, allowing you to put a, a, a suppressor up there, up to 1.38 uh, di diameter. Also, we changed the 
ma spare magazine button that you just showed. In our previous version, it was a pull push pressure kind of thing. And here we have like a little AR magazine type uh, button. So it, it's more secure. We had some issues with that on the Gen 1. We had, the, what was great about this country is when you have something that's not great, they'll let you know. Oh yeah. And, oh, yes. uh, and we were told often what we need to fix. So we just listened to everybody. And that's what we did with the Gen 2. Another one of the th things we did, as you said, is the aluminum rail. We went to an aluminum Picatinny rail, makes the, the MCK stronger, more accurate, farther range, more sturdy. Um, it also has an option to put these two little things here. You have an option to put a brass catcher. It can catch the shells, so you can attach a, a brass catcher to this place as well. So if you're doing uh, helicopter shooting at hogs, let's say, because guys, you get this in uh, uh, 10 millimeter, for example. Yep. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great hog gun. It is, it's a great hog gun. Well, you're, you're touching an area that is brand new to us and this is like yesterday brand new. Um, we, we joined with Mossy Oaks Realtree and Two Timber to make patterns on our MCK, specifically for people like that that are gonna go do a hog hunt or a coyote hunt or whatever. Um, another thing, the door itself comes back a little bit farther than our older version, so it's a little bit easier to put it in and out. It's another like 10 degrees back. And those are the main advantages that we did on the Gen 2. By shot show, we should have our Gen 3 even. All right, now the Gen 2, because uh, a lot of my viewers out there are like, yeah, but dude, I got a Gen 1. Can they put any of these changes from, let's say I have a Gen 1 already. Yep. Can I update it to Gen 2? It's a, a great question, and it's asked often. What we do, what we allow on our website, you can buy a Gen 1 MCK and do an upgrade with the aluminum rail mm. and the Gen 2 stave. If you already own a Gen 1, you can buy just the rail or just the Gen 2 stave. So there are certain of the upgrades that you're able to do, and obviously certain ones that you can't. Yeah, the higher uh, suppressor Yeah, I can't, I can't open up yeah. the nose anymore, yeah. right? So okay. you need the body. So everyone we make now and forward is already in the new generation phase. So it's always in the Gen 2. All right, now um, accessories. You mentioned it, you have an O-light. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, um, light on, light yep. off, a grass. That's a bright son of a gun. It's right 500 there. lumens. 500 yeah. lumens. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the kickstand. What are some What are some of the other options we have for this? Well, uh, we got crazy options. We 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 have learned. My guys that... like crazy. You don't understand the <laughs> asylum. My viewers, they like crazy. Well, what we have noticed that you anything got a bayonet? that yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. You got a bayonet. I got, I got two bayonets. I don't have one bayonet. Two different sizes. Okay. We've noticed that anything that you put on here, people want. So it can be a ballistic bag. It can be a knife. We have a, a knife that goes into here instead of a spare magazine. We have bayonets that go in instead of the flashlight. We have glass breakers that you put on the shroud itself. We have uh, drum magazines. We have red lasers. We have green lasers. We have red dot sights. We have regular sights. We got one point slings. We have a, uh, a tri uh, trigger guard. There's I would say probably about 28 different accessories add-ons to the MCK. And what we have noticed, they buy the MCK base, two weeks later they buy another uh, flashlight, two weeks later they buy the sides, you know. People like building here, so they're adding on to their stuff as it, as it goes on. People talk about Glocks uh, being the Lego of the pistol industry because there's all the aftermarket parts. I guess you can literally now add more Legos to the outside of it. That's, that's badass. Okay. It's, a, it's a lot of fun. Um, I got a bunch more I want to talk about in a little bit. We're going to get you guys some more shooting. But before we do, I'm going to break for a commercial break so YouTube can slap you right in the face with a commercial. We'll be right back. All right, hey, welcome back, guys. I hope you liked that commercial as much as I did. <coughs> can't stand YouTube, dude, but they do this stuff to me all the time. All right, um, some of the other things, you mentioned some of the different types. Uh, what firearms do you cover with this? We have a total of 120 different handguns fit into our 17 MCK chassis. I couldn't even list 120 <laughs> different handguns. So If you made me, I probably could get close to it, but I probably would screw it up myself. So I, the 17 different chassis, we'll talk about simple stuff, so it's easy. Okay. We'll talk about the Glock family. The Glock, the Glock family. has a shitload of Glocks. Yes. So we have one chassis fits to 17, 18, 19, 19X, 22, 23, 25, 31, 32, 45. That's one. That's this one. That right is here. correct. That's Which we have in the Gen 1 and the yep. Gen 2 option. Okay. All right. I'm good with then, that. Cool. Let's go on. We have another one that we just mentioned for the Glock 20 and 21, which is a 10 and 45 caliber, the more hunting nice, caliber. Yeah. So a lot of guys like that. It's our second most popular one after this one. I think the higher the caliber, the more they enjoy shooting the MCK because of the recoil. Yeah, less recoil. Yeah, it's just, it just more, more fun, More fun I think. to play with. We have a 26-27. We have a 34-35-41. 
We have a 43, 43X, 48. We're coming out now with a 29 no, no. and 30. Okay. Keep these going. are all, 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 all Glocks. You're just rattling all these. I, 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 hope, I, hope, I hope I'm not screwing it up. I may have been missing one or another. Um, then after you get rid of the, after you go from the side to the Glock, we have Zigzauer. The Zigzauer, we have um, the P320, full size and compact. And now we're going into the M17 and M18 that you mentioned. The manual safety is something that we had to deal yeah, with. Yeah. Uh, and we're going into the X series now. We had the carry, now we're going into the X series. Okay. In the Smith & Wesson, by the way, it's been very successful for us. We have the SD9, which people thought, who's going to want an MCK for an SD9? It's the most, one of, it's probably our third most popular conversion kit because there's so many of them out there, there are, and there was nothing yeah. they could do with it. There was no aftermarket stuff that you could run an SD9, the MCK, instead of throwing away my SD9, let's throw it into an MCK. So yeah. we have an SD9 and SD40. We have the Shield, which is our most narrow MCK yeah. that we have. Um, we have the M&P, uh, generation one and 2.0 with three different barrel lengths. Uh, compact, full size, and the four inch. So that's the Smith and Wesson uh, family. And we came out with the Springfield. The Springfield has uh, the XD, the XDM, the XD Mod 2, and the XDM Elite. And we have it in a 9 and a 45. And we just came out with the CZ. So, All right, quick now, question. Yeah. When you have two different size guns of the same model, mm -hmm. right? Uh, like you mentioned, the, the 320, the long and the short. Mm -hmm or a Glock 19 versus a Glock 17, mm -hmm. they fit in the same frame, correct? Yes, it's a, a, actually an important question that I didn't explain. The, um, the way the MCK is built, there are, there's a screw on the right side and there is a screw on the left side that you undo them, the shroud itself then gets released. You can pull the shroud out, this is the shroud, you can pull it out and make it for you, the width of the length of your, of your slide. So if you have a 17, you're gonna pull it out, and if you have a 19, it's gonna be inside. When we ship, we always ship in the compact version, okay. because we're always worried that if we put it into the full uh, okay. size and he has a compact, he puts it in, he's gonna blow it up. Okay. So if you wanna get your 17 in there, you're gonna have to pull out the shroud. And that's if you read the instructions. Unfortunately, in this country, people get overly we don't excited. Read the instructions. No, I, I wish. Did it even come with instructions? Yeah, there is inside oh their instructions. Oh my God! There yeah. really are. But what they do is they open up huh. a box and then they throw they throw out the case. You know, they they don't even bother reading it. This and then they call us, our uh, customer service. My 17's not fitting. Oh, but take out the shroud. My 17's not fitting. Take out the shroud. It's the same. You don't. Even, I could put it on an automatic and get all a robot instead of <laughs> paying somebody for it. It's answering the same question the whole time. So. Um, so that's how we adjust. So we just move the shroud in and out. With the Springfield, which was our biggest uh, problem, they had a barrel that's 3.8, a barrel that's 4, 4.5, and, and 5. So we have four different barrel lengths in our, um, in our Springfield version. The CZ has three. That's okay. not that bad. Now, you and, mentioned single stack. Yep. All right. Um, 43, 43. This is yep. for the 43, 43X. And the 48. And the 48, which is basically just longer. So yep. literally, I can take my... My EDC pistol. Not with the laser. Not, right, so with this won't hat. fit with yep. my laser on mm -hmm. it. Um, and we had a 43. Guys, this yep. is this is single stack. I'm gonna pull it off real quick, real mm -hmm. quick. Just take a second. All right. What, what's unique now, about the 43 is go there, ahead. yeah, go ahead. That's, it, there's no slide underneath the, the, the shroud. No, no he's talking about yeah. No, yeah. No, there's no light rail. Yeah. There's no light rail underneath that. I was curious, how did you crack the code on that with no light rail for my lasers? What they had to do was it actually locks around the trigger guard. And I was thinking you were going to have to do something like that. But it's exactly what we did okay. kind of thing. So right. we had to find another way to hold the handgun. So we're catching it on in the front of the, pit, uh, of the trigger remember guard. Remember how I yeah. did this? Yeah. Same. Now, now it'll right. be a little bit easier. You don't have that click going forward. All right. So you now, just line it up. All right. So literally all I have to do is sit it, line up the rear sight. Push it down. Stick it in mm -hmm. and then literally just slide it forward mm -hmm. like that. Yep. And, and then push forward. click till that cl locks in that place. That takes three seconds. All right. Um, but there's no takedown lever now. I, it's just pulling it back out. You All can right. pull it out. Show it out. We shot this earlier just like that. And I'm here to tell you guys using... A, uh, you guys know this is not my this is not my this is not my work pistol. It's not my EDC pistol. The Glock 43X for me. This is what they call my church pistol. This is what I carry when I'm not carrying a pistol. Don't judge me just because I shower with a pistol. Why are you judging me? Uh, but uh, it's a good gun. It's a good gun. Um, accurate. Okay, I I can shoot 35, 40 meters with this thing. But you guys know. 
I can get 100 meters with my Glock 17. I can get 100 meters with my Glock 45. Those are my adult Glocks, and I'm very accurate with them, but I practice a lot. This little thing right here, I'm happy with 45 meters. We plugged it into this puppy earlier, and we were easily able to work our way back, get 100 meter hits with it, without even trying. I want that to sink in because this is a EDC in the summertime when you're wearing t-shirt and board shorts and you basically can't carry a firearm because uh, it has to be very slim line. This is a single stack pistol. Yeah, I know I, I run the shield armed mags that are double stack. Shh, don't tell Glock. Um, but guys, you can drop this in, have this in your book bag, uh, your beach bag, whatever it is. And I pray you never get involved in that active shooter incident. But if it happens, I pray you have the, the knowledge, the skill and the tools at hand to accomplish the mission and save the day because either you are or you're not. It's, there's, there's no in the middle. So, um, dude, I was blown away by how a, you could take a subcompact and m make it look Star Wars and actually have it perform. And uh, it's great, it's great stuff, man, great stuff. Um, all right, so I'm gonna put it back in because it looks sexier in here than it does sitting on my belt. So literally on just sure. line it up, go like this, yep. slide it forward, mm -hmm. and then just close that door. Yep, you're good to go. Rack it, it's still clear. Um, I mentioned book bag. Uh, Guys, with this thing closed, I want you to see how small that puppy is. Literally, so you stick your, that, that one's got rounds in it. So is that um, smaller than a full-size gun package? Yep, yeah. right it's, there, there um, a little bit. It's narrow, but I, I'm here to tell you guys, you could put this thing into the fight very, very quickly. Yes, I don't have my laser on it now. Um, but you could. But I could. You can put a laser instead of the flashlight yeah. one as well. Um, you can run the flashlight. I, I, I love some of my primary arms, Optics sure. that got the uh, ACSS reticles in them. And uh, no, dude, it, it's badass. I can shoot it closed, can I? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. All right. Uh, Emery, you were telling us about a technique for jumping out of vehicles. How do you do it? Yeah. So, well, it's, it's not only jumping out of vehicles, but back in the day, back in the before day. we had these, right, in my unit, uh, for certain things, I won't get into it, but we use micro Uzis. It's the smallest Roughly version. Roughly the same size, magazine still up through the pistol grip. Correct. Okay. It functions like an Uzi, but it's much, much smaller and actually more dependable. Okay. Um, and so what we used to do is we'd run them on a one-point sling, and they'd be glued right here to my leg with some Velcro. Not some, not Velcro this way, right? There's a flap over it, and you'd rip it out and take your first few shots like a pistol. Okay. Right? You take your first few shots like a pistol, and then when you have your first lull or a fire. second, yep. finger comes off the trigger, roll the gun this way, and you're back to back to shooting. And but yeah. except you're now shooting like it's a carbine. And with your so, extra points of contact. Yeah, so yep. it's it's kind of like a fast deploying. All I need right now is speed, so I can shoot it like a pistol. Okay, finger comes off the trigger, this comes back, and I'm shooting kind of like a carbine. You see how when I do those actions, I'm so used to getting my grip back here yeah. like the micro Uzi. Um, now I'm going to reform my muscle memory to grab up here. Um, so like yeah, it. very cool. Very cool. Nice. All right. Um, guys, this, this is not, a, does not require a dedicated gun. You don't need to take a, you don't need to take one of your spare Glocks and convert it and leave it like this. And I, I, I can't stress how cool that is because, um, uh, you bring your gun, keep your pistol with you. You can put this thing, it's only a couple hundred bucks. Put it in your vehicle, forget about it. Put it in your wife's vehicle and forget about it. And uh, you're coming out from dinner and all you have on you is your church pistol or your EDC pistol. And now you're able to get it in a gunfight. Uh, that's just awesome. Mike, okay, crazy. That's amazing that you guys brought all this out of your melon, your melon, your individual melon. Uh, this is your brainchild. What else has CA got coming up on the horizon? You know, because of the, the fan base that we have in our little niche, right? Because we're, in our world, we're very popular. But in the external world of the shooting, a lot of people don't even know who we yeah. are. So uh, there's a whole bunch of handguns out there that don't have an MCK. 
and that's not cool. Every handgun has to have an MCK, okay? It's like the Coca-Cola commercials. I'm talking to you in the back. No gun uh, left behind. <laughs> no so, gun left behind. But okay. um, as, as some of you guys may know, most of my adult life I spent uh, training the Israeli military how to shoot. So I trained about 500,000 soldiers, and I did that for about 17 years. And one of the things that was frustrating for me was every gun that we had in the IDF, whether it was the Galil, whether it was the M4, whether it was the old M16s, whether it was the uh, Tavor, any, any guns that we had, um, all the guns were straight. They were like, um, I, I, I call it a broomstick. And for some reason, for the last 500 years, every gun is made straight. Now I get the barrel being straight. It's the rest I have a problem with. So what bothers me is that we're not built straight. So every one of us is so used to shooting and he basically adapts his body, contorts his body to fit that straight yeah, that okay. straight thing. So, mm -hmm. I my, even you know even the trigger pull to to pull a trigger, you have to break your wrist. Yeah. So my wrist is not staying like this. I can't hold a gun like this. I have to go like this. My, I'm not holding a gun like this. I have to you know everything. I'm breaking all the time. Um, so what we what we try doing is with this new PCC coming out pre shot show next year. So we have about six months. It'll come out in December probably. Is every point of contact of the human body on the PCC is being changed. So is because my hands come at an angle to a gun. My, yeah. my elbow's on my right of my torso, my left elbow's on the left of my torso. I'm coming at an angle. That is going to be changed. The way my face hits the, the, the stock is going to be changed. The way my shoulder touches the, the gun is going to be changed. Even the direction of the trigger pull. Our gun will not be, your trigger will not be pulled backwards. It'll so be, you don't have to break that wrist you, like Exactly. That? So okay. now people are going to look at it and they say, that doesn't look like a gun because it's not going to be straight anymore, right? So people are going to say, what the hell, that stupid guy from, Amer from Israel, he's, you know, smoked too much drugs when he was younger or something. Um, when you look at it, when you look at it, it's going to look weird. But so did this grip until people put in their hand. So once they hold it, we are very, 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 very confident that once people do that, they're going to say, wow, that, that feels different. That feels normal. And we believe... In years to come, many gun manufacturers will do sim something similar to their weapon to make it more humanized, because the gun is not humanized. More I don't anatomically know. fit. Yeah, more ergonomic. It has to fit the body better. So we're mm -hmm. going out in that way, and we're also doing a new optic that uh, it's kind of cool. Um, I don't want to give away too many secrets, but the optic is going to be ready by the summer uh, by SHOT Show as well. And what it's going to be kind of unique about it, it's going to have a lot of things that are unique. But one of the cool things is you're going to go to a target and with your iPhone and it'll see your, your group and where your aim point was. It will, it will do all the, the, the mathematics and it will automatically zero your, your sight. So you will not be left, right, up, down, trying to zero, taking another hour, <laughs> wasting ammo, wasting time. And it's going to talk. Your phone is going to talk to the site, and it will zero automatically, which is kind of cool shit. But uh, let's make sure it works before we get yeah. to it. <laughs> By the way, as, as insane, we'll, we'll see how, we'll see how well as insane as all that sounds, yep. Mikey, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're the first one that put out a smart weapon site. I know, I know. We we first right. came out with a uh, with uh, we built a site that you can. It would only turn on when I made a shooting motion. If I didn't right. touch it, it would it would go to sleep. It had uh, a quick reticle and uh, and you know, uh, like yeah. shake awake that yeah. has been copied by pretty well everybody on yeah. the planet. Yeah, right? we, we we started this about I don't know maybe ten years ago. We came out with a site to play with that, and it was you know our first time playing with optics. And I went with Beretta a little bit in Italy, and we did some optics for tenders in 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 India for them and stuff like that. So it's uh, I love the optics. I love the R and D side of everything that yeah. I do. You know, I, I like the sales and the marketing and all that, but uh, the R&D is where you can think outside the box. Oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, for so. sure. All right, Mike, um, I appreciate you coming out. Thank you, man. Guys, um, he didn't have to win me over. I, I went at this thing very, very skeptical, uh, but I believe in having an open mind, and uh, I'm here to tell you I'm very pleasantly surprised by how I can increase an, a novice shooter and bring them up to where they're now able to be competent, effective, and a contributing member on the battlefield uh, with nothing more than uh, adding their personal firearm into uh, this micro conversion kit. Um, I hope uh, if you've sat through this much of the video, I hope we've won you over also. Mike, uh, how do they get these things? Well, we always believe that 
you can hate on it until you try it. Once you try it, you become a believer. We, we say, come in and get converted. We will convert you. Uh, <laughs> we made actually a sign about that. It's coming out soon. Yeah, like a warning sign on your man cave. Yeah. You know, come in and be converted. That's going to be our, our, our sign. It's, it's a pretty cool one. Wait, it took me a while to think of that shit. Just it's a conversion they, Before <laughs> they roll the rock off the front of the tomb. It's a conversion or... <laughs> Be converted. Um, so, they, you know, every distributor, every uh, major distributor in America carries the MCK. We're very proud that we're probably the only conversion kit that any of them carry. Uh, your local dealers have it, or you can come on our website. Uh, we'd rather you guys buy it from the dealers anyway than our website. But uh, our website is cagearup.com, and you're welcome to come there and, and, and see what you want to see. We want you guys to be happy. It's a good feeling buy. Uh, we're very, very, very proud that it's 100% made in America and that you guys uh, love our product. It's a, it's a big deal for us. All right, you guys know the deal. I read all your comments. If you got comments, questions from Mike, leave them down in the comment section. I'll pass them on to them. Next video, next Friday. Uh, guys, YouTube has been unsubscribing everybody. Make sure you're subscribed, hit the bell so you get notifications, and I will see you next Friday. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.